markets. Michelle, welcome. So uh, you've had enough. You, you've raised the forecast. Good afternoon. Yeah, go, go ahead. Tell us. I was going to say, we blinked, uh, if you will. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's face it, the you know the numbers that we've been seeing, Kelly, you alluded to, going back to that strong employment report, the strong retail sales numbers, obviously the inflation numbers, not only with today, but the CPI numbers. I mean, it's been setting the stage to suggesting that the cooling in the economy, the, the deceleration in inflation that looked like maybe it was going to unfold uh, as we came into the year, getting people more optimistic the Fed could could begin to, to pause. I mean, I, I, that's all, all these data that we've seen the last few weeks have called that into question. I think it's got to have left the Fed very uncomfortable. The last thing they want to do is pause and, and, and have to then restart, you know, because they ended, they, 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 you know, they stopped too early. And so we think with the, you know, with the data that we've got in hand, with inflation moving up, not down, the Fed will take more aggressive action as, as early as March, moving moving by 50 basis points as opposed to just 25, yeah. and that they will end up having to do more. So we've gotten on that terminal rate at 575 and wouldn't even rule out that it hits 6%. This is the kind of weekend that the, the inbox is fun to read because you get people, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff, they, they drop things like, you know, weekly update and they're going, you know, we think they're going to 6.5%. Like crazy things are about to happen. So let me just quote Chris Repke at Forward Bonds uh, writing after the report. The risk is now whether the Fed shifts back into full attack mode and delivers a half point hike in March. And listen up, Steve, ups the terminal rate forecast to 6% this year. So he thinks the dots, Steve, in the next meeting could show a significant upward bias. Of course, we're going to get a lot of the February data before then, so we'll see. So I, I think the Fed's going to be a little bit more incremental than Michelle suggests. I, I could be wrong. And, you know, we had, I had the same debate with uh, Diane Swank earlier where I acknowledged you could be right about this, but you're going to need the data to break in your favor. And in this case, it would be negatively in your favor in the sense that you have to have a higher March inflation number showing that what we've seen today is persistent uh, into the month of March. Another strong jobs report that might seal it, but I don't think the Fed wants to herk and jerk around here. I think what the Fed would prefer to do is to move more incrementally. So my bet would be that that uh, terminal rate does go up, but is more in the 540 range. I think that's probably right where the market is priced. I'm looking right now, and I don't have a better feel for this than the market itself does, at only a 25 percent or so probability of a 50 basis point hike. And I'm sure what Michelle would respond is, Yes, but when the data come in or if the data come in, as you expect, then the market's going to change. And I would agree that's true. Michelle? Yeah, I mean, that is exactly. And, you know, and Steve, we've only put a 60-40% a chance on, on 50 basis points. I mean, we, we ourselves are, are right. we're continuing to debate whether or not they'd step up or, or not. I, I think, you know, to right. some extent, we're, we're listening to the fact the Fed wants to be, I think they'd rather get ahead of it, if you will, recognizing that if they do move more aggressively near term, it may ultimately mean they can stop sooner, that they the terminal rate won't have to go so high as it would. What if you kind of right. dragged out but with Michelle, a bunch of 25 cents? Yeah. Just to say, that's a change in regime, right? Because what the Fed did is it kind of downshifted a little bit. It went from this front-end loading idea to the responsive quarter. And what you're saying is you're going to go back to the front-end loading. I know there's some support on that. I know that uh, uh, Loretta Mester and Jim Bullard wanted to do that. We know there's one other person, I'm guessing, by the way, publicly here with no knowledge that it might have been Neil Koshkari because we know that he's in the 540 range. Um, and I also think that Powell, if the data supports it, I think the chair would support that uh, going back to a 50 to get in front of it. The, the question becomes one of a concept of how is inflation going to play out here? We did have some success towards the end of the year in bringing it down. And are these two reports we've had, are they bumps along the road or are they part of a new trajectory? I'm a little bit more optimistic that inflation begins to come down again and so the Fed can settle back into those quarters. But I would change my mind in an instant if that March data is, again, on the strong side. Do we just have to wait a couple weeks, Michelle, to find out? Or do you think there's a better way to get a feel for that answer? Well, I think we will have to wait because I do think these, you know, the next jobs report, the next inflation report uh, clearly will go a long way to, you know, to altering expectations. But, you know, our numbers don't, I mean, even 175,000 jobs gain uh, for February on top of the, you know, it's a pullback, if you will, from what we saw in Five seventeen thousand in March, but it, it's still very strong, and we do have inflation numbers remaining very persistent. You know, four tenths of a percent increases, and that absolutely feeds into our expectation that the Fed is just going to end up having to, you know, having to do more here you know than the even thing, they might currently expect.